In this demonstration, I want to show you how you can use Illustrator's alignment tools and grid setup so that you can better refine your uh, work that you've done so far, kind of for systems thinking. Um, so the first thing I'm going to show you is like an example from the very first thing that you should have done for uh, your initial assignments where all of your squares or points or whatever were all the exact same size without any kind of rotation or uh, scaling and so on. So one of the things you'll notice, and, and this is probably something you did, because I did not require that you use a grid or any kind of alignment tools at that time, is that a lot of these things are not perfectly aligned. So there are some points that, uh, that, I could, that I could show you. For instance, like right here, if you look at the space that's in between these two squares versus the space that's in between these other squares, you'll notice that this space is greater. And the other thing you might notice, for instance, is like the proximity of this box to the right edge is not proportional to the proximity of it to the edge at the top. And so there's some things there that kind of throw the balance off a little bit. Um, and we can uh, kind of look at some different ways that you can figure out how to, you know, f decide what things you want to make these snap to, how you want your spacing to work, and so on. There are a lot of different ways to look at this, so I'll just show you some different options, and then you can kind of make your own decisions. So one of the first things that you'll notice is that if you go up here to view, you can look down here where it says show grid, first of all, and if you want to see what the grid is set up, to be, then you can take a peek at it. Now, your grid might look a little different than mine, but if you want to change the way the grid is set up, then you can do so. Also, I'm going to toggle using Command R, or if you're on Windows, it'll be Control R, to get my rulers to show. And you'll notice that my artboard right now, and this is going to be the same for you if you're using the, uh, the template that we made for the earlier part of the assignment, is seven inches by seven inches. So you'll see that's true up here. Um, and if I go up here to Illustrator, uh, and then on Windows, by the way, it would you would go under Edit, and then you would find Preferences, but it's different on a Mac. So on, uh, on a Mac, you'd go to Illustrator, Preferences. Again, I'll repeat, on Windows, you would go to Edit, Preferences. And then you're going to choose where it says Guides and Grid. And I want to just show you really quickly how you can uh, elect to, to look at this. And you can look at it in lots of different ways. So my current grid, the way I have it set up is I have <clears throat> excuse me, a grid line every one inch, which goes into it evenly because I have seven inches. I don't have like seven and a quarter inches or something. I have seven inches. So I have my grid set up so that there's a grid line every inch. And then if I want sort of these subdivisions, for my grid lines. Uh, I went ahead, since it's in inches, you can have quarter inches or eighth inches or whatever you want. So you can change this part for subdivisions. I made mine every four subdivisions so that basically it would be divided up into quarter inch subdivisions. And you can choose to either have your grids in black or you know show pix pixel grid and blah, 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 anyway. Um, and, but if you wanted to have, let's say that you, the places where whenever I turn snap on in just a minute, let's say that the grid is too far spaced out, you could do your subdivisions so that you've got eight subdivisions and that would give you eighth inch spacing instead of quarter inch. So it'd give you a little bit more um, flexibility, I should say, I guess. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave it so that my grid line's every one inch with four subdivisions. And then the next thing I wanna do is go up here to view and I want to snap to grid. And if for, in, for some reason snap to point and snap to pixel is turned on, um, go ahead and turn those off for right now. Just know that if you have all of these snaps turned on, then it it's potentially not gonna snap exactly to the place that you might be expecting it to. So for right now, let's isolate it so that we're snapping to grid. And you'll notice here, if I look at the way that these boxes are, you'll notice that now these are like slightly off the grid marks. And so if you wanted them to actually be on the grid marks, 
then what you could do is, here, let's blow that up again. Like, for instance, I could take, you know, one of these and I could move it over and have it snap. So if I do that, you'll see that it automatically wants to just snap to the edge of the grid. And so I could just drop that right there, for instance. And you might look at that and go, wait a second, it's snapping. It's snapping not directly on the lines. Well, that's because it's actually seeing these as, uh, even though these are subdivisions, it's still snapping within, um, if you look right here, this is uh, an eighth inch. So we've got a quarter inch right here. And then you'll see that this would have snapped to uh, like basically the half halfway point. And you'll also maybe look at this and go, wait, it doesn't look like it's really on the halfway point or, you know, it looks like it's in a strange place. One of the things that you, if you have strokes, you're going to find is that the stroke might make it seem like it throws the snap off a little bit. So if I go over here and first of all, I'm going to zoom back out for a second and I'm going to, I'm going to do a select all. I'm going to select all of my boxes and I'm going to set the stroke to zero because in this particular case, you actually probably should have had no stroke. So I can set it to zero. The other thing that I can do is I can click on the stroke box over here and I can just put a strike through and that essentially gives it no stroke. Um, okay, so now, anyway, if I wanted to zoom back out, you see that this box now looks like it's, it's snapping in a different kind of way, right? Um, it doesn't look as confusing with that white uh, stroke line that's around it. So if you wanted to expressly be able to see those uh, eighth inch marks, like I was saying before, you can go up here uh, either to edit preferences on Windows or Illustrator preferences on Mac. And let's go back over here to uh, Guides and Grid. And then this is where if you wanted, you could set this like to eight so that you could actually see all of the set little subdivisions and stuff, okay. Now, one of the things you're also gonna notice is that if you zoom in here, you're gonna see that it's like slightly off the grid. Well, that's because if you remember proper, if you remember, if I, I, can, I can pop that there, but then you look down here and it's like, oh, it's slightly off again. So this is one of those things where you have to start paying attention to like alignment and grid systems and stuff. Um, because if you remember, I intentionally told you how big to make this and I think it was like 0.85 so if you were to click on transform while the box is selected you'll see that in fact the width and height is 0.85 of an inch and I did that on purpose so that you would be sort of forced to deal with some of these issues later so in this particular uh, initial phase that we did um, you know, you, you, you have to start to think about like how to, to how you're going to align these other things. And you could manually grab these and align them and say, okay, well, look, at least this, you know, has like a line would be going directly through the uh, 45 degree axis, you know, and you could align them all manually and stuff, right? That's one option. Another option would be, uh, and that's, that's if they're not touching and I would be okay with them not touching. That's a decision I would make. Uh, you would make a different decision if you wanted. But if I were to select all of these, um, there's something else that I can do besides just snapping them to grid. I can also go up here after I've selected them and I can click on align and I can get this align objects thing to show up. So there's align, there's distribution, and you can distribute, uh, distribute spacing as well. And so you can kind of play around with some of these. Like, so if you were to look at horizontal distribution to the left, you'll notice that it automatically redistributes the space. And if we wanted to zoom in to see how it dealt with that, what it did was it evenly spaced them so that they're evenly spaced apart, right? Um, uh, based on the left-hand side. So that's one, one way of, of doing it. Uh, it. You could also sort of mess around with some of the other distribution options as well. Um, and just so you know, like if you wanted something to align in a different way, like if, if I were to click on this horizontal align left button, see what it does there. Now you'll notice whenever I do a left alignment, you'll notice that the, this part is totally collapsed. And so you can see that the vertical alignment wasn't actually good, even though I had done the left distribution. So I'm going to actually go up here and, uh, let's go up here and I'm going to say undo align and it'll go back to the way it was. 
And if I come back to alignment again, I can start to sort of mess around with some of these things. So uh, and if you were to look, for instance, at uh, horizontal uh, distribution for the center, you can see how that starts to work when you click on these different things. Um, and then for vertical distribution, you know, you could distribute them based on the top. And then you'll see that it actually started to change some of this. So if I did like top distribution and left distribution, then the spacing becomes a lot more even. And now if I wanted to just really quickly see, and I click on this horizontal align, you can start to inspect how some of the spacing is here. And you can see that it's a little bit more even. This, um, this one at the top might be just a hair larger, right? And so, uh, these are the kinds of things that you could come in and you can inspect if you want. Um, and it's actually, no, it's actually even. It just sort of does an optical illusion. Right, so if I undo that last align, then that's the last distribution that I had. So there's some different ways you could do this. So I could either distribute them so that there's equal even spacing like that. Um, I could also change it up if, like I showed you before, where you were manually uh, popping these little things in such a way that they were uh, going to be able to cut straight down through. But if you look right here, the way that I have this alignment set up is that I basically have it so that the spacing in between this way and this way is even between all of them. But if I were to draw a diagonal line, you would see that it doesn't perfectly cut through it. In fact, if you wanted to do that, you could literally take over here, you could take your line tool and Let's uh, switch the stroke color because a line is only a is only going to need a stroke, and I'm going to make it something like a bright blue color for the stroke, and then I'm going to draw my line in such a way that because I have snap to grid turned on, it will automatically snap to grid, and you can see that as I draw the line, it cuts through these in gradually different places, and if I wanted to, you know, take my stroke and and turn it down so that it's a really thin stroke, you know, even like maybe 0.15. And then you can really start to see how these things don't, they don't intersect through the um, corner axis, all right? And so this is technically an okay form of alignment, but it might not be the form of alignment that you want if you want everything to sort of line up directly on the axis, right? So there's some different ways that you can think about doing this system. And I'm just going to sort of scoot this line over. I might reuse it in just a minute for something. So if you looked at this and you said, you know, I really want these things to line up on the corners, then you could come here and you could manually grab them and make them snap when you're doing snap to grid. And then, you know, then it will also still line up with equal distance but it will line up in such a way that now if I wanted these things to be, you know, directly coming out of each other's corners, then they're all going to line up that way. So that's, that's another way of looking at this, okay? Um, and then, you know, if you also wanted to look at this one up here, we had talked about, let me zoom, oh, I'm going to scoot this over because I'm going to do something with it. You know, we can, we can look at where this is lined up and, you know, you could make a decision that you want it to be um, like a quarter inch off the edge of each. That's one option. And then if you did that, you might want to look at this system and say, okay, well, if this is two squares off, this probably should be two squares off. So maybe in this case, you might want it this over here. Let me zoom back in so you can see what I'm talking about more closely. This is three grid marks off. Um, you could also make this one three grid marks off the edge as well, right? And so then you've got more of this system thinking where this margin is the same as this margin over here. And the same also, or pretty darn close to the one that's over here as well. And, you know, it, you can also look at how this thing starts to intersect. If I rotate this line, I'm going to constrain the axis. Um, you can look at how this starts to behave uh, as I pull it out further, and you can see how it uh, intersects over here, and you can make some decisions about whether or not it's important for you to have, you know, all of these things touching and then line up. All right, so so you can kind of 
uh, adjust all of these things. And I, I did this uh, 0.85 thing on purpose so that you'd have to make these decisions. Okay, so that you'd have to decide what was more important. Is it the proximity of the edges or is it that these things are touching in the corners or whatever, right? So um, anyway, that's just, and you wouldn't keep this line. You would eventually delete it, but this gives you some point of reference, you know, for how you could um, start to do uh, like grid thinking, right? And systems thinking, all right? And I would encourage you, to really sort of play around with the different alignment options that are up here to see how they behave, hover over them, read what it's supposed to do, and then see what the behavior is so that you can understand how it's working, okay? All right, so, and then, you know, uh, the other thing that's important to notice too is where it says align to selection. If you click on align to selection, then it's going to basically take the selection that you've made, for instance, like if I were to select this, this, and these, right? If I were to select all of those, that's actually a selection. So it's only going to be relevant to the actual selection. However, if I were to say align to artboard, then in that case, it would make everything change in a different way. So actually, let's do this. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna take these four objects and I'm going to click on a line, and if I were to say horizontally uh, distribute to the left, you see that what would happen, because now I've got a line to artboard, is that it's aligning them to the artboard with the, with equidistance horizontal distributions on the left uh, hand side of these other objects, right? But if I were to say align to selection, well, here, let me undo what I just did. If I were to take this and then go back to a line, and say align to selection and then do this. You see that it behaves very differently. It actually didn't change it because my distribution is already is already uh, identical. Um, you, you know, so you could also see what would happen whenever you start to like if I did a vertical align center, then they're all going to line up so that the center line is is lined up. All right, so it looks at the center registration point. So I'm going to do I need to get out of that and I'm going to do edit undo a line. Okay, and so you can start to play around with these to start understanding what's going to happen. If I do horizontal align center, then it's going to make a vertical line based on the center point. And <clears throat> you might not notice how these things are really lining up differently because these are all exactly the same size. And so if I were to choose align objects to the left, center, uh, you know, or the right uh, vertically, then it it probably always looked the same, but like if you were to use these tools, for instance, with your graphic icon and all the shapes are sort of these weird different sizes, potentially, especially when we get to, you know, things that have different scale, then you'll start to really understand better how these things align differently.